Hi everyone, uh, Jeff Mack here. We are going to get our uh, live video started in a minute. I realized this is actually my second live. Uh, I realized last time that uh, I was getting comments coming in and I couldn't read them because uh, I'm showing my age now, but I can't hardly read anything without my glasses. So at any rate, uh, I am... Um, I am going to share with you in just a minute some more tips on getting your business off to the best possible start. Now, I'm going to be speaking primarily uh, to people that are interested in building a business. Okay. What's up, Jaime? Good to have you on. Uh, and, and you know, if you're just kind of casually interested in, in direct sales or in, in becoming an entrepreneur or starting a business of some sort, you're going to get some value uh, out of this for sure. But, but I'm going to primarily be talking to people that are interested in building a direct sales business. Now, it could be uh, those of you that are new, um, you know, brand new, and, and, and you'll take some comments out of this, but also those of you that are coaching people, um, you want to uh, uh, you want to just kind of take my tips and, and use that to coach those people as well. So for those of you that are starting new people, if you're brand new, the whole goal of this thing is to uh, help you get more people started. So this will help you as a coach. So just kind of look at it from whatever perspective that that you want to look at it. Okay, uh, and so. So at any rate, let's let's go ahead and get our our, uh, our live video started here, and we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna post this on my wall for those of you that missed it. Uh, and uh, first, I want to talk about the video that I did a couple days ago. If you want to scroll down uh, later and look at that, that's that's great. I talked about a couple facets of getting started, which is kind of a product order, but there was a couple things uh, I didn't say, and actually kind of got a little bit of a heat for some things I did say. So let me clarify that before I go forward. First off, what I didn't say is uh, the the uh, the company that I was with when I got first started in this industry over 20 years ago. You know, we started at four thousand dollars, and that was a big stretch for me. Uh, now you could start for less, but that's what my sponsor really encouraged me to do. There were some financial reasons uh, why that made some sense for me, and so you know, I did something uh, at that time. I was a 25 year old kid in a lot of debt. Uh, I took out a second lien on my car at 31% interest with an organization called Norwest Financial uh, and, and, and used that to buy um, – you know, a product pack. Now, I'm not even sure that percentage rate, uh, is, is legal to loan money at that these days. But, but, uh, but I also tell you that we don't really load people up with a ton of product anymore. But my point is this, okay, uh, is that, is that when we went from asking and encouraging people to do $4,000 orders, then $1,000 orders, and then from 1000 to 150 uh, point orders. The rationale was, is okay, less money, more people are going to come in. Well, what ended up happening is, is our volume went down and more people didn't come in. And so it's just a matter of finding someone that's serious. And as I said in the last video, you know, if people want to, um, any good to see you? If people want to uh, build a business, you know, they're going to find a way either way. Now, let me also say this. The first thing um, that, that you know, that I got, the first comment I got back, uh, this is a private message after my last video was, hey, you know, we can't do that in North America. You can't encourage big product packs and things like that. And that's, that's the regulation has changed here. Uh, most companies, if you're dealing with a company that's, that's, that's operated in North America uh, and in the United States, you're going to find that that um, big orders to get a higher kind of rank in the compensation plan aren't completely legit today uh, unless you can also work your way up to that level. So if you can work your way up to that level, uh, then you just got a choice. Do I want to go do the work and then get paid at that level or do I want to get paid at that level right away? Do I need the inventory, et cetera? So that's my, my kind of cleanup, if you will. Uh, after watching, uh, after uh, uh, the last video I did, so uh, and you can again, you can scroll down. Good, good topics there, uh, and you can scroll down and, and review that. But today we're going to take it one step further, okay? But uh, again, 
uh, if you're starting the business, regardless of whether you you know are selling a product or a service, regardless of what your initial investment in your business is, I want you to, to know two things. Hadana, good to see you. Uh, thing number one is is that it is a business, and regardless of what direct sales business you're building, compared to traditional business, your startup cost is extremely low. So just keep that in mind. It will if you are selling a product, it is you know, advantageous to have it on hand. It's just like, as I used in the last video, like opening up a, you know, a restaurant and not having any eggs to sell, you know, to make an omelet. So uh, that's number one. Number two is regardless of what investment you make at the start of your business, investment or no investment, if you don't work, you're not going to get paid. And so uh, just just to understand that, this is a business. Businesses take work. Businesses take promotion. Marlene, good to have you on with us. Uh, businesses, um, you know, uh, require effort, require marketing. You can either go pay someone to do that for you. My guess is, though, exactly, I mean, period. It takes work. So you can go pay somebody to do that for you or Chances are you got in, involved in this business because you like the low startup costs. You got to do it yourself, but nothing happens without work, without promotion. We're going to talk about that. So now, uh, why the second video and getting people off to a good start? Well, it, it's it's like this. Uh, this is an incredibly important topic. Uh, the 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 fact is, is that most of your energy is used up in the beginning of anything. And, and, you know, if it's, if it's a plane ride, most of the energy is used up just getting the plane off the ground. If it's a rocket launch, most of the fuel is used up getting, getting, uh, you know, off the ground. So this is an incredibly important topic in a business like this. Um, you know, it's emotional energy. A lot of emotional energy is used up as well. Some people are just absolutely bulletproof courageous and they'll jump right in. But some people are going to have that voice inside their head and it, they're going to be talking to themselves, talking in, talking out. Uh, and so, and so that takes a lot of emotional energy as well. And what I want you to know is that I want you to make the most of this time and the most of that energy because let me just give you a visual. Have you ever reached in the back of your refrigerator, pulled out that, you know, jar of yogurt or whatever and opened it up and it was a little fuzzy and then you realize it expired like three months ago, right? Uh, and there's no sense trying to eat it. And I know some of you, in fact, I've been guilty of it as well, have drank milk past the expiration date. That's a different story. Uh, but the fact is when new distributors come in, there is an expiration date, meaning you've got this much time to get their attention, and it's typically two weeks to thirty days. Uh, now, let me let me ca you know qualify that as well. I want people to come in to and build a business for the long term. Okay, I want them to come in and build it for the long term. And and the bulk of the money that you're going to be make this is a a back end weighted business from a money perspective. I mean, you get you get in the very beginning, you're not being paid what you're worth. You know, after your first year or so, you've heard this. You maybe start to get paid what you're worth, and then you know, three to five years down the road, you get paid more than anybody's worth, right? But in the beginning, uh, you know, it, it's going to take some time. It's going to take some effort. It's going to take some energy. And if people don't see something happen relatively quickly, then we're going to lose their attention. Just remember, you're competing with, if you're coaching and bringing new team members on, you're competing with everything else. You're competing with the TV. You're competing with the ball game. You're competing with the concert. You're competing with the brother-in-law that tells them they're idiots. You're competing with uh, everybody else trying to get them into their business. And I want you to know, also, if you're, if you're sponsoring people internationally, Okay, and I'm all about building an international business. That's kind of my globalize your enterprise is my mantra. Um, you know, you're not even able to be with them more. So you're out of sight and out of mind with them, you know, 99% of the time. So it's even more important that you make the most of your time with them. So any, exactly, I mean, any small success that you can help get them in their first 30 days, whether that's a new couple new customers, a new partner, uh, just more engagement on Facebook even, just something where they can start to see some progress, uh, that is critically important. So some kind of success in the first, you know, 30 days really, and just know that when you enroll someone, you know, the clock is ticking. So that's why two videos on this topic, because it's, I think, the most important topic, getting people started. Okay, so uh, a 
couple things that you need to consider in doing this, okay, and getting started, whether you're brand new to your new business or whether you're coaching someone, is there's got to be a plan, a launch strategy, okay, and it can't just be haphazard. You can't just enroll someone and expect them to know what to do, even though what we do is extremely simple. It's extremely easy. Remember, they got the voice inside their head that says, oh, no, that's not right. Do it this way. Oh, no, that's never going to work. Don't try. Don't put yourself out there. You're going to fail. You know, you, you know the voice. If you've been in this business, you know the voice, and so we, we've got to uh, we've got to put a plan together and help them execute that plan. So that plan is going to include, obviously, prospecting. Okay. Now, I got a new term for you, and 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 you know I'm a, I'm a trailing edge baby boomer. That'll give you an idea how old I am. But uh, you know. Um, I've also owned a club in my career, and these kids that worked in our club, we had promoters, and they promoted. Guess what they did? They drove traffic to the club, and so um, promotion really is today's term. term. Promotion just means prospecting, and so there's several ways to do that. Okay, you can do social media. Alan, good to see you, and thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, it's good, good, good. Uh, a good promotion is a multi-prong strategy. Colin from the UK, good to have you on, my friend. Um, and that includes number one, and includes social media. Now, if you are like me, kind of a you know new to social media, so to speak, uh, don't worry. It's never too late to start. I will uh, actually give you a reason. You know, uh, Twitter started out. The first live video thing was from Twitter. I never really learned. A whole lot. Never really did Periscope uh, so much, and then you know Facebook jumped all over it with Facebook Live, and so I benefited by not spending the time to learn from Periscope, and now I'm just on Facebook Live. And so hey, it's never too late to start. That's a moral to that story. So, but you want to get on social media, okay? There's a whole different topic for a different time, but just just utilize social media. We'll do a, a, a live on that sometime soon, okay? Then there's also offline. Our business can't just be built online, okay? Unless you, if you got a credibly big list, maybe you're a blogger, um, you know, an affiliate marketer, then you've got some tricks up your sleeve that most of us don't have. But for the most part, this is a business that connects people, and there's there's you got to solve a problem, you got to build a relationship, uh, and where those two come together, you have an opportunity. But you can't do it just solely online because you can't build that relationship very quickly, very well that way. So you want to utilize your current relationships by picking up the phone also and talking to people, people offline. So online, offline, social media. Uh, and when you, um, now we're going to talk about this in a second, but what are you promoting to? You're promoting to an event. We're going to talk about what that event means in just one second. But uh, another thing I want you to keep in mind is all you're, as you're starting your business, as you're in your first 30 days, who you should promote to and, and personally call are also the people that you really want to work with, people that you think are the sharpest people, people that, um, you know, are busy. Busy people always get things done. I can tell you nobody ever said they got too much time or very few people, even people that watch TV for three hours a day. And so, and so everybody thinks that they're strapped for time, but people that do more stuff, people that are out there involved in the community, uh, you know, people that, that are aggressive, real estate agents, people that are in sales, uh, it doesn't matter. You're looking just for motivated people, but you want to look for people that, um, you know, that, that, that first off, you believe you, if you don't already have a relationship with, that you believe you have some kind of connection, uh, so you can quickly build a relationship with them. And, and in many cases, you've probably heard something called a chicken list. In many cases, there are people on your chicken list, that would be the people that you're scared to call because, Either they make too much money or they have too big a stature in the community or what happens if that person says, no, they're going to tell everybody I'm an idiot. Um, you know what? Successful people don't think that way. Really successful people uh, applaud you for you getting out of your comfort zone, for you getting out of the box. And, and they'll welcome the call. I've had some really successful people turn me down, turn me down kind of flat cold, um, but... The fact of the matter is they appreciated my tenacity and the fact that I was getting out of the box. And some of them were going to give you referrals. Some of them will be product customers. That's, again, a whole different subject 
for a different time. But the important thing is, is go to those people that you consider to be high up on the food chain, if you want to call it that. And the reason is, is they probably have a lot of people. There's two reasons. They probably have a lot of people that really respect them. So it's kind of like E.F. Hutton, for those of you that remember that commercial. Uh, you know, when, when, when they talk, people listen. Okay? So that's number one. Number two is, is in your first week, two weeks, three weeks in your business, there is a reason that you don't re reason why you don't have any success yet. So take advantage of that reason. Take advantage of the newness. Because if you get the question, you know, a weekend, well, Jeff, how are you doing with your business? You could say, well, yeah, I'm just started. Uh, but, uh, it, you know, things are going strong. I'm very optimistic. If you get that question six months in and you're not really successful yet, Hey, Kimberly, and you're not really successful yet. You're going to have to dodge the question. You're going to have to, you know, dance a little bit and people probably going to tell that you're dancing and that's probably going to, you know, um, you know, they're probably just going to be politely declined. You may have lost your interest right then. So take advantage of the fact when you're new in the business that you are new in the business and you've got a reason to not have a big business yet. And so, that's another reason why you want to call those people on your most successful list or higher up on the food chain or whatever you want to call it early in your business. Again, another, in fact, I'm going to make some notes because I've covered some great topics that we could do a whole video on, uh, you know, right away. Kimberly, good to see you. Thank you. Um, and so the key is, though, whether you text somebody, whether you uh, connect with somebody on social media, um, or you just call them, always have a personal touch. Don't ever just send an email and invite somebody to an event in the beginning. Uh, that's weak. Uh, and and you know, most people, if they even read the email, uh, will see it as weak. And and so, you know, that's a whole different strategy as we go through more in this on this launch strategy. We'll talk about how to handle that. But don't just email people, okay? You're going to really reduce your rate of success. Just texting is better than just emailing, but some of that with a phone call uh, is is the best way. Uh, again, for people that you already have the number four and that are in your Rolodex, that are your current relationships. Okay, now, again, we're inviting them to what? An event. Now, you want to plan an event. Uh, <laughs> I get Kimberly asked if, if Alan asked me to train on this for me. No, you know what? I can tell you this is a subject that everybody needs to hear. I need to hear it again. Everybody needs to hear it. New distributors need to hear it. People enrolling people need to hear it. This is a commonality in our business that um, just can't be trained on too much. And and so I'm trying to tackle the subject. Hopefully I do a decent job. Uh, and so you're inviting people to an event. Now, an event could be a number of things, okay? It could be um, an event you have in your in your neighborhood clubhouse. Uh, it could be, you know, a party or social that you have in your home. Now, these things aren't, you know, you don't lie to people and you don't invite them and then lock the doors and pull out a chalkboard. It's not like that. These are going to be, again, another subject for a different time. But these are going to be fun events. You want to make them events, but they're also going to be informative. But you're inviting people to something. Now, if, if and, and you're going to schedule your upline, your sponsor to help. If you're a coach uh, enrolling a new member, then, you know, be there to help, okay? If you can be there live, be there live. If you can have them over live, have them there live. If not, own a Zoom call, uh, own a webinar, own a conference call. The events can also be, uh, you know, digital. Um, hey, hey, how you doing, Steph from Ottawa? Good to have you. Uh, so, so the events, um, you know, can, can be totally digital or they can be a hybrid. You could have, you know, um, you know, a launch event in your home or, or in a restaurant clubhouse or whatever and just have a laptop and, you know, FaceTime or Zoom, you know, with your upline who could, you know, and your mentor who could either cover the material or just kind of say hello and answer questions after you pop in a video again. That's a different strategy. Maybe if you're in a direct sales business or you've got a product that shows great results, you know, maybe just do product demonstrations. Whatever it is, you want to schedule an event in your first, you know, really your first two weeks in the business. And, and I just said something really important. Schedule it. Set a date. Okay. Why do you think people set a date for weddings and send out invitations? 
so that people will be there, so that it's on the calendar, so that it actually happens. It's an important event in their lives. Well, you know what, guys, you're starting this business for whatever reason that is. I know what mine is. Uh, you know, mine's a little three foot munchkin in the other room. Uh, whatever yours is, um, I will tell you that it's probably an important reason. So set a date and don't set a date. Uh, don't set a date, you know, a month or two months down the road or don't get ready to set a date, set a freaking date and make it happen right away. Uh, and, and that's exactly right, Steph. You always want to have something you work for, whether it's the next appointment or the date for your first event, or even better, when you have that event, have a date for your next event so the people that you're getting started that night or that week can invite people to the next event. So promoting from event to event is also critically important. But set a date, get on your, your sponsor or your upline mentor's calendar uh, and get it on, most importantly, your calendar and then just execute your plan. Now, uh, I, the other thing you want to do, okay, this is critically important. Again, another training for another time. You want to have your own signature statement. Most people would refer to it as an elevator speech. But here's why that's so important. It's got to be short, sweet, to the point. We got so much noise coming at us every day. I mean, day after day, we got junk mail. We got spam. We got text messages. We got text spam. We got TV. We got radio. We got kids. We got whatever. I'm just getting tired thinking about it. Okay. So, you got, in a lot of cases, about 20 or 30 seconds to capture somebody's attention about your subject. You can't be weak. It's got to be short to the point. It's got to be something that people say, hmm, tell me more. Now, totally different, you know, we could do a whole training. In fact, we'll do a whole training on that subject as well because I've got some, some real strong points uh, on that subject. But get an elevator speech and practice it. And that's what all of your promotion and inviting uh, when you speak to someone live is going to be kind of centered around. It'll be kind of like, you know, the core of everything that you do. Okay. And so you want to get that, you want to practice. And when I say practice, I don't mean practice it tonight, then wait and practice it again next week and then wait and practice it again next month and then get ready to plan an event for December the 1st. No, I mean, set a date, Work with your roller, get this signature statement that you feel good about, the strongest to the point that gets people asking questions. Uh, role play a little bit with them. And then that night or the next day, get on it. Once you've set the date, give yourself a good, you know, don't set a date two weeks in advance uh, and, and start promoting for that today. Okay, get a week, get a date a week in advance and start promoting, you know, tomorrow or today is fine. But if you, the longer you go, the more likely people are to forget. Okay. We're going to talk about following up and all that stuff at a different training as well. But, but that's also an important part of your launch plan. Now, the last thing I want to cover on this video today, and I've covered a lot. I, I appreciate your patience. I, uh, I've, I've covered a lot of material, <laughs> hopefully in a short period of time. Yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, so, so, um, it seems like, as I go over this, that there's a lot to know. And it seems like that, that this takes a ton of time. And I'm going to tell you it doesn't take a ton of time. It takes whatever time you have to give. Okay, don't give less than what you have to give. Because guess what? Whatever your why is, you're shortchanging that reason. And you're compromising. And you know what? If your reason is important, you don't want to compromise. Okay? If your why is important, you don't want to compromise. So, so it doesn't take a lot of time, but what it does take is it takes focus, right? It takes focus. So that's why you want to, you want to set this plan, okay, in place. And we'll go over specifically over a prospecting plan or a launch plan or a different training, but you want to have a plan. Then you, you got to work. You got to execute that plan. And in my whole, you know, my mantra to, to this business is consistent, focused execution, no matter how you know, quickly you get started, how much, um, you know, results, how many, how much, you know, uh, profit you get right away. You're, you're doing this for the rest of your life, not for the first week. Okay. But getting off to a fast start is incredibly important because as you build a bonfire and as you get this confidence, you're going to help other people that you enroll build that bonfire. Okay. And then, and then I can tell you success 
breeds success. And Alan, you're exactly right. Whatever you focus on, you get better at, right? And so, and so where, where, wherever your head is, uh, you know, that's where you're going to go. And so if you got 30 minutes a day, if you got 15 minutes a day, and the fact is, guys, most of us have 15 minutes a day. I don't care how you know, busy you are. It's either drive time or it's downtime at night or it's time early in the morning or time right after the gym. Everybody's got a little time, 15 minutes, 30 minutes a day. And if you got an hour a day, put an hour a day in, right? Don't shortchange yourself. Don't cheat yourself. The only person you're cheating, you're not cheating a boss here. You're cheating you. You are the boss. Don't cheat yourself. Don't sell yourself short. So allocate the time and just, and just you know, plan, execute your plan, follow through on your plan, and then, you know, repeat. That's all this business is. But the most important thing, just like with a with a plane flight or or a rocket launch, the most important thing is getting started. You're going to use the most energy there, so make the most of that energy. So, so that's what I, what I wanted to cover, you know, on this video. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna post this on my wall. If uh, if you got any comments or any questions, uh, pop them in there. I know many of you probably are looking at this uh, you know, as a recording. So, listen, I, I I'd love to hear your comments, your feedback. I got a question here. It says, what's the best, this is from Darlene, what's the best way to get people to come that don't want to come because they think they have to buy something, although you tell them there won't be anything to buy? Okay, that's a that's a good question. And and here's, let me go back to, to first off, how you're presenting it, you know, your elevator speech, whatever, uh, your confidence in it, how you make it seem, okay, make it seem fun, not like work. But at the end of the day, not everybody you invite is going to come. At the end of the day, probably the best that you can expect is about 50%. If you get, if, if you invite 20 people, okay, you can plan on 10 as a success. If you get 12 there or 14 there, then you, you, uh, have amazing credibility and have invited well, and you should applaud yourself, pat yourself on the back. Um, 10 is the watermark. If you get eight or you get six, that's also not unheard of. So the bottom line is you want to overshoot by at least a factor of two. And for some people, things come up. Okay. Uh, and so it just, it just happens overshoot. So you have some there. Now for those people that don't come, okay. Uh, it can't come. Um, well, first off, you want to follow up with everybody the night before the day of a quick text message. A couple of things you can do to get people to come is, hey, do you mind stopping and picking up a bag of ice on the way? You know, and, and so you'll know right then whether they're coming or not coming. That is a little trick that, that I've learned uh, in the past. And so, um, but if they keep just no showing, they just don't have an interest and, and it's okay. Now, the other thing I want to tell you is not everybody's going to join your business and that's okay too. Guess what? You need customers. And so, you know, this, this, if you're the key thing to keep in mind, if you are launching a restaurant, okay, if you're opening up a restaurant in your town, you're going to invite everybody to come, particularly you got a friends and family night where you're going to invite everybody to come. Right. And, and, and you can say, well, guys, Jeff, we're giving away food then. Well, Give away a glass of wine. Give away snacks at your event. Okay, so lots of people do that, and that's okay. Um, but but it's your business, and you're inviting them not to come get free food that night, but to come back and come to your business and patronize your business. You know, next week and next month, over and over again, and spread the word. Right. So you're going to invite the people that are closest to you and the people that have influence. Well, guess what? You're doing the same thing with this business. And if people don't come to your restaurant opening, you don't take it personally. You focus on the people that are there. And and same way with this. If people don't come, don't take it personally. Maybe something came up. Uh, focus on the people that you're there and plan the next event and invite them then. So I hope that answers your question. But at the end of the day, not everybody's going to be a business builder. Not everybody's going to be a customer. Uh, but if you treat people with respect, with dignity, uh, you have fun doing what you're going to do. People are going to help you. They're going to give you referrals or, or they'll at least, you know, be clapping for you. And you know what? If they're talking about you behind your back and, you know, they're not your friends anyway. So you haven't really haven't lost anything. So, all right. With that, guys, I've run over uh, just about over my time. We got about 30 seconds left. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this live up. I appreciate, again, your attention. And uh, this is a really important topic. I want, I want us to dive as deep as we want in the comments because 
Um, this is the most important thing you're going to do. Get your business started. Get your people's business started. And if you do nothing else but be a good enroll or a good sponsor at getting people started in their first 30 days in the business, you will build a massive business. You will help people uh, immensely. And you'll help people build a great legacy type business. And you'll be where you want to be with your goals. So with that, guys, I appreciate your time. We'll see you on the next live video. Thanks for your support. Uh, and uh, see you soon.